Hello everyone, my name is Nelson Cruz and I'm a product support specialist here at Autodesk. What I'm going to be showing you guys over the next few minutes is how to get the Backburner server manager and web monitor all running on uh, a Linux machine. So what we're going to do first here is uh, open up a terminal, log in as root using the su command, and then um, what I'm going to do for this example is install the uh, Backburner uh, packages individually um, just because I had uninstalled them for the demo. This would generally get done if you ran a setup script uh, and it would have installed with Maya in that case. So let's go ahead here. You can see I have my RPM command. I actually have an erase on this, which is incorrect. Let's make sure that is correct now. Let me go and change the E here to a minus UVHI and hit enter on that and it's going to go through and install the packages. Once that's done, what we need to do, you can see it's starting up the servers as well, is go to the install directory and run the con backburner config to make sure everything's running as, as we wish. So do an ls on that. So we have a backburner config file here. We're going to run that like so. And it's going to ask you a few questions. Um, it's going to ask you whether this is actually going to be your, your manager. In this case, of course, it is. And it's going to ask you if you want it to be a server as well. And we say yes to that. Next thing we want is your IP. For that, I need to go grab it here. Just not sure what, what it was. So next thing I need to do is put in my IP address, like so. And what uh, Backburner is going to do is actually configure everything for you. It's going to stop the service, the managers, and then uh, it's going to put in all the configurations that you've entered into the proper files and then restart the manager and server. Now that the services have all launched, what we're going to do is check some of the config files um, in the Backburner directories and then we're going to jump into setting up the web monitor just to make sure everything is running. So first thing you need to do is go to the uh, CFG directory here. Sorry, network. Do an ls on that. And what I want to actually look at is this backburner.xml. So I'm going to go into VI. I could do a cat on it just to see the printout, but just in case I actually have to edit anything, I'm going to take a look at the actual file. So what we should see here is under the manager portion is the IP address we entered, which we do get. Uh, we get our server name, which is my local host name. And that should do it. Um, so if the server, if the manager was on another, uh, another machine, then we would have to manually change that from the IP address I entered here, uh, right here, to whatever that IP address is or host name of the other manager. So I'll quit out of this. I'll step back a bit. Um, what we need to do from here is now uh, set up the uh, web monitor. So to do that, we use Apache. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure Apache is actually installed. And to do that, we run a check config uh, with a grep to it and to see if the H if we get a response from HTTPD. As you can see, we do, and it is on at this time. Uh, based on the on functions here that you see in the printout. If we want to turn it off, we can do that by, let's say, typing in a stop. We can stop the server to make sure it actually did stop. If we actually come back to a web browser, hit enter on that, we would get nothing. So we put in our IP address, hit enter, we get no response. If we actually type in a start now on that, you can see that we get an OK back. And if I come back into Firefox here and hit enter, we get our Fedora test page. So we're halfway there. As a test, we can type in Backburner here and we'll get, we, we can see that things are starting to work, but we did not set up a user yet. So I, I would assume that this would fail. So let's say if we go like this, so this is a generic username and password I give. And you can see that it's come back and it's saying, sorry, you cannot get in. So let's get, go ahead and fix that. 
So this is all, there's two steps that we need to do here. Uh, one is setting up a user in the backburner.auth file, and then the next one is actually setting up uh, access if we needed to. So if you wanted the user to have root access, then we would need to go and fix that as well. So let's go check out the auth file first. So let's go to CD, etc, httpd, and then go into the conf. Sorry, step back out of that. I'm in the wrong one. Is auth. So first thing we want to do is make sure that we have a backburner.auth file. Backburner put that there already. The only thing is it doesn't have um, our access yet to the an assist account or a user account. So what I need to do here is actually get that created. So the command to do this is as followed. So it's using HT password command, which is in in the incorrect directory here. So let me step back. Let's try this again. And then uh, what we have to do at the end is type in the username that you want. Like so, it's going to ask you for a password. You enter that twice. And now we're good. You can actually cat that... Uh, file to see what it, what user are in there, the passwords are encrypted. Oops, I meant to say cat. Like so, and you can see we have a backburner user and an assist user and then the passwords are encrypted obviously. Now if we go back to the browser here and hit enter on this address again, this time we'll log in using our assist account again. And we should be in, no problems, I'll say no to saving the password. Uh, as you can see, we have no jobs, obviously, in here. We just set this up, so nothing waiting for us. But if we go to the server tab here, we will see a uh, our that our box is actually sitting in idle, waiting for a job. I do have another box in here, but it's absent. That's actually my uh, other desktop machine. But uh, you can see that it's it's not on, and I did that on purpose just to show off this local machine.